Is it a demon or is it just my flesh? That's the million dollar question for today, right? Um, especially with, uh, de not denominations, with deliverance ministries that are like, deliverance ministries that are everywhere right now and people are being told if you're struggling with this sin, if you're struggling with that sin, it's a demon, it's demonic, you need deliverance. Uh, well, let's see what Paul says in scripture because I don't want any of you to think just because you're struggling with some type of sin that you need deliverance, right? And you know, anytime I do a video, I always want to make sure these things are backed up uh, with scripture because I just don't want to talk. It's my daughter. I just don't want to talk out of like my own authority, but what does the word of God say, right? So I'm going to Romans uh, 7 verses 14 to 25. Uh, the pericope is called struggling with sin. We're going to see what Paul says, the apostle, when it comes down to struggling and battling with sin, right? <clears throat> so it says, uh, Paul says, so the trouble is not with the law for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me. For I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know that what I'm doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. So I'm not the one doing wrong. It is the sin living in me that does it. So already, which I'm going to do, um, I'm going to talk about the commentary. But notice Paul hasn't said anything about a demon. He hasn't said anything about uh, the demonic. But Paul lets be known, though I'm saved, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, and God is using me mightily. I'm, Paul says, I'm all too human. I'm a fallible, flawed human being. So I, I, I seek to live. I seek to do the will of God. But I'm all too human. And the things that I, I want to do good, I want to do good, but I don't end up doing it. Right? Um, so let me continue. And I know that nothing good lives in me. Right? That is in my sinful nature. So Paul understands he has a sinful nature within him, which is why he sins. He's trying, he's looking to do good. He wants to live by God. He wants to be faithful to God. He wants to, he wants to live good. He wants to be obedient, but he understands there's a sinful nature on the other side. All right. Um, I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. Y'all ever felt that way? All right. Um, I don't want to do, I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. So Paul is like, I'm over here trying to live right and I want to do right. And even when I'm trying to do right, I, I struggle with that. But here I am when I'm trying to do right, I'm leaning over here doing wrong when I don't want to do wrong. But I understand it's not me that's willingly just let me go over to the right side and do wrong. Paul's like, no, I'm over here trying to do right. But I'm over here. I understand it's not me that's willingly going to the side. It's within me. The power within It's a sinful nature that has me vulnerable. It's a sinful nature within me that has me going over here even when I hate doing these things because they're not attractive to me. Right. You will find yourself doing a certain sin that's not even attractive to you. Like you're tempted by a sin that's not even attractive to you. Like you feel like that's a sin you wouldn't even do, but you're finding yourself doing that particular sin. And it's like, that doesn't even attract me, but here I am, I find myself over here. Well, let me tell you, brother and sister, it's not a demon. It's not demonic. You're not controlled by some demon and you need deliverance. You need to be freed and all. No, you have a, you have a humanity. Paul said, there is nothing good within me. I am all too human. So though we're saved, we're still human. We're still fleshly. So we're going to fall into sin. We're going to sin <coughs> whether we like it or not, right? Um, I have discovered that this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. When I want to do right, I inevitably do, which means I can't escape it. Inevitably, like you can't escape the inevitable, like it's going to happen no matter what. That's what Paul is saying. I want to do what is right, but I inevitably, I always, no matter what, end up doing what is wrong when I seek to do right. I love God's laws, God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Not a demon, not the demonic, not being a, a Holy Spirit filled believer uh, taken over by a demon. But Paul says, 
There is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. That sinful nature is still within me, right? Oh, what a miserable person I am who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is in my mind. I really want to obey God's law. But in my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. So you see these two button heads. Paul says, I want to obey God's law. I want to do what's right. I want to follow God. I want to do what's what I'm looking to do right all the time. But because of my sinful nature, because of my this this because of this humanity, Paul says, I'm all too human because of that, because, because of my vulnerability, vulnerability and the power within me. I found myself over here, not because I want to be, because the truth is. I'm, I'm like Paul and so are you. I don't want to be over here. I want to be over here and I fight to be over here. But I find myself with that power within tugging me. You get what I'm saying? I'm being tugged over here. So I'm constantly fighting, constantly warring, right? The flesh and the spirit constantly going at it, right? So let me go ahead and um, finish these commentaries, man. And I'll let y'all go because uh, we're about six minutes in. Uh Paul shares three lessons that he learned in trying to deal with his sinful desires. One, knowledge of the rules is not the answer, right? Which is in Romans 7 and 9. Paul felt fine as long as he did not understand what the law demanded. <clears throat> when he learned the truth, he knew he was doomed. Number two, self-determination, uh, struggling in one's own strength doesn't succeed, right? So you can't fight this thing by yourself. Or, you know, if you're struggling with a certain sin, don't try to, you can't try to beat it on your own by some type of a, abstaining by your own strength. This takes the power of God, right? Um, uh, and Paul found himself sinning in ways that weren't even attractive to him. Would you imagine that? Paul was sinning in ways that weren't even attractive to him. And number three, becoming a Christian does not stamp out all sin and temptation from a person's life. So, like some people like um, Mr. Rogers uh, would tell you that uh, because you have some type of sin in you or because you have some type of temptation, uh, not just Rogers, others, that because you have some type of sin or temptation that it's demonic. You have a demon in you and you need uh, you need deliverance. And the truth is, you don't. All of us have temptations, um, even when you get delivered uh by god right because when you get when i got delivered it wasn't by people laying hands on me it was the fact that the more i got into the bible got closer to god the other things that i used to do began to you know fall off me more of of his word and then all the old stuff began to get filtered out right so you're going to still sin you're going to be tempted temptation is not a sin it's acting upon the temptations what makes it a sin but as far as uh us being saved, you're still going to sin. No matter you like it or not, you're going to sin and you're going to be tempted. You're going to want to stay over here and do what God wants you to do, but then you're going to find yourself being tugged by temptation. And there's times where, guess what? You're going to beat the temptation and you're going to get the victory. And there's other times you're going to find yourself being pulled over to that temptation and you're going to find yourself in sin. Does me have a demon? No. It's the fact that I want to do what's right, and I don't want to do what's over here, which is sinful, but I end up doing it because of power within me. Because of my humanity, I have a vulnerability of that sinful nature. I'm vulnerable to sin because of my sinful nature. As I keep saying, Paul said, I'm all too human. Because of my humanity, I'm a slave to sin because of my humanity, because I end up doing that, which I don't want to do. All right. Uh, uh Verse 15, right? This is more than the cry. This is more than the cry of one desperate man. It describes the experience of all Christians uh, struggling against sin or trying to please God by keeping rules and laws without the Spirit's help. We must never underestimate the power of sin and attempt to fight it in our own strength. Many of us in this walk have been tempted and we tried to fight the power of sin and temptation under our own strength. And we find ourselves falling right back into the very thing that we said we wouldn't do because we're trying to do it by ourselves. Right. Um, Satan is a crafty temper, tempter, and we have an amazing ability to make excuses. Instead of trying to overcome sin with our own human willpower, we must take hold of God's provision for victory over sin. 
The Holy Spirit who lives within us and gives us power. And when we fall, he lovingly reaches out to help us up. This uh, reminds me of the scripture where it says, if we sin, we have an advocate with the father. Right. When we do sin, which we will sin, we have an advocate. Right. Who is faithful to forgive us uh, if we confess our sins. He's faithful to forgive us when we do mess up. Man, you're going to mess up so many times in this walk. You can't even keep count. Only God knows. But uh, God is willing to pick you up. He's willing to reach his hand out, pick you up and tell you to, uh, to keep going. Right. So it is the Holy Spirit that delivers us. And that's a problem with these deliverance ministries is that people rely on man. They rely on uh, a fallible, a flawed human being like myself to deliver them. Because for some reason, this person has the power of God within them to where they can put their hands on you and you can be free and no longer do the things that you're struggling with. Uh, and they go back Sunday after Sunday after Sunday to these events, to these crusades, to all these revivals looking uh, for deliverance. And they and once they leave that Sunday night and they go Monday through Saturday, they're struggling with another sin was well, because it's a demon. Is that why? So do they need to come back on Sunday and get deliverance or something else that they're struggling with? And once they get hands laid upon them, the next week comes by and then they struggle with something else and they need to come back Sunday. No. See, you allow man to be free, but the truth is you're a human being. So you're going to be tempted. You're going to sin. You're going to fall in sin. Whether you want to do the sin or whether you don't, you're going to fall in it. You know why? Because Paul the Apostle fell into sin. He did things that he didn't want to do that wasn't even attracted to him. He found himself trying to live good, wanting to live for Christ, but he found himself still sinning. Right. So, yes, Paul, the apostle was doing things that he didn't want to do, but he kept it a bean with us. He kept it real deal. He kept it a hundred that he sent. He did things that wasn't attractive to him. Right. The power within is the sin nature deep within us. The, the power within is that sin nature deep within us. This is why we sin. This is why we get tempted. And, and we sometimes we fall into that temptation over this way because that that sin, that power within us, that sin nature within us, it still lives within us. Just because you're saved, it is not rid of, of us not sinning. You're not going to be sinless, but you will sin less. You feel me? This is our vulnerability to sin. It refers to everything within us that is more loyal to our old ways of selfish living than to God. So that power within us, the nature to want to live sinful, to live in sin, is still within us and it's more loyal to this flesh. It's more loyal to the old ways of how we used to live before um, salvation, right? And then the last commentary, this is a, this is a, this is, there is great tension in our daily Christian experience. The conflict is that we agree with God's commands, but cannot do them. As a result, we are painfully aware of our sin every day. Me, you are all painfully aware of our sin and how many times we mess up. And we're aware of the things that we struggle with that we don't want to struggle with, that we're tired of struggling with. Because it's times that we do these certain sins and we say, God, I'm tired of doing this. God, I'm tired of this flesh. I hate this flesh because I'm doing stuff that, that I'm doing stuff that I really don't want to do at all. But I found myself doing it. That's how Paul felt, right? Uh, from Paul, we learn uh, uh, to do about it. Whenever he felt overwhelmed by the spiritual battle, he would return to the beginnings of his spiritual life. Remembering how he had been freed from sin by Jesus Christ. When we feel confused and overwhelmed by sin's appeal, let us claim the freedom. Let us claim the freedom of Christ. The claim the freedom Christ gave us, his power can lift us to victory. This is why I don't agree with this individual when they said the gospel is baby milk. Because when you feel yourself being overwhelmed by sin, being overwhelmed by the temptation, you always go back to the gospel. The gospel is not baby milk. The gospel is not for beginners. The gospel is it reminds us of why of who saved us. And how we're no longer slaves to sin, but how we've been liberated, right? When you're, uh, uh, when we were slaves to sin uh, before Christ, man, we did what we we did. We didn't have a choice to to choose good or, or bad. We just did it because that was the only thing that we knew in our minds because we weren't filled with the Holy Spirit. But now we're uh, saved. But now we're saved by Christ, filled with His Spirit. You know, we're no longer slaves. But now we can do good. We can choose to follow God. 
even though sometimes we end up going this way because of our sinful nature and it's not because of us, we have that power now to overcome sin. It's not really us. We didn't overcome sin by our own doing, but it's Christ that overcame sin. And because we believe on Christ and what he did, we also have overcome sin because he overcame. He defeated sin at the cross. All right. So, uh, man, share this with somebody who may think that they need to go to these deliverance ministries and get help and need a demon cast it out of them. Right. Um, especially if they're, like, they're saved. You don't need a demon cast it out of you. You can't have a demon and have the Holy Spirit. That's, that's ridiculous. Right. Um, <laughs> but, yo, share this with somebody and hopefully it encourages them. Do I believe in deliverance? Yes, I do. But I believe in biblical deliverance, what the Bible says, not what we're seeing today with a bunch of emotionalism and charismatic mania, you know. But uh, video hitting 16 minutes, man. Again, share this with somebody. Hopefully this encourages you. Gives a little more insight. Uh, read Romans, man. Read Romans. It's really good. And Paul talks about struggle with sin, living in the spirit, all these type of things, man. So um, I hope y'all enjoy the rest of y'all day, man. Uh, be safe and God bless.